I like for people under affliction. O merciful God and heavenly Father, who's taught us in thy holy word that thou dost not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men, look with pity, we pray, upon the sorrows of some servants we know for whom our desert, desires and prayers are most earnestly desired. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Sanctify thy fatherly corrections to them and do their souls with patience under their afflictions with resignation to thy blessed will. Comfort them with a sense of thy goodness. Lift up thy countenance upon him and give him peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pentecost 2.30, verse 2. And Salem Street was gathered, a crowd, many a land, and all their own tongues did the gospel understand. For by what triumph of the Son the curse of Babel was undone, when God did send the Spirit, so to fill the blessed three in one, the honor, praise, and merit. Very nice. Well, we turn our attention to Hen Professor Dr. Henry Martin Baird, uh, his book, the Theodore Beza, The Counselor of the French Reformation, 1519 to 1605. He's a professor in New York University. He's the author of The History and the Rise of the Huguenots of France. Let's see if we can track this down. The Huguenots and, and Henry of Navarre and the Huguenots and the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. And I've been wanting to track down something in the Waldensians too. In the Piedmont region of France. Published by Putnam's Son in New York and London. It's held by the University of Toronto. Published in 1899. Preface. Enlarging it here. It is not a little surprising that there seems to be no life of Theodore Beza accessible to the general reader, either in English or in French. In German, there is, it is true, a satisfactory biography by Hep written for the series Lives and Select Writings of Founders of the Reformed Church, edited, edited by Hagenbach. Besides a masterly work undertaken by that eminent scholar, J.W. Baum, on a much larger scale, but unfortunately left incomplete at his death. Both biographies, however, were published many years ago, and by Baum, the last 40 years of the activity of Biza are not touched on at all. Yet of the heroes of the Reformation, Theodore Biza is by no means the least attractive. His course of activity was long and brilliant. He presided over the Reformed Church in the French-speaking countries through a protracted series of years as its recognized counselor and leader in times of peril, both to the church and to state. The friend of Calvin, he was also the friend and advisor of Henry IV until within five years of that monarch's end. Thus, his permanent influence can scarcely be exaggerated. Moreover, his career was rich in incidents of dramatic interest. Got another clear writer. Certainly no more impressive romantic scene can be found in the history of the period than the appearance of Biza at the colloquy of Poesy, when for the first time Protestantism secured a hearing before the king and royal family, its advocates not being forced upon their unwilling notice, but on the contrary, formally invited to set forth the reasons for its existence and for its separation from the Roman Catholic Church. The history of Protestantism in France could not be written with the part played by Biza omitted. 
The author has therefore had not a little to say of him in his history of the rise of the Huguenots and in his history of the Huguenots and the Henry Navarre. <coughs> but the protagonist <coughs> in the drama of the French Reformation merits separate treatment and a thorough knowledge of the man and of his work requires a development of his life and actions that it could find no place in a general history. For the facts, I've gone back to the original sources of all Bees' own autobiographical notes and to his letters. An indefatigable writer, Bees has left us great mass of correspondence, much of it of historical importance. A portion of that which he judged to be the most permanent value in its bearing upon theological subjects saw the light during his lifetime first separately and afterwards in his collected theological works entitled Tractationes Theologicae. I shall have frequent occasion to draw upon these. Of his correspondence more strictly historical in interest down to and including the colloquy of Poesy, Professor Baum, gathered a large store in the documentary appendices of his biography. Professor Baum, maybe you should look for that too, I don't know. Is it in English or German? Many years since copied with his own hands, but not utilized, several hundred letters still preserved in the libraries of Geneva. Zurich, Basel. These copies have recently become the pro property of the French Protestant Historical Society and been added to that society's rich collections in Paris. Most of these letters have never been published. I have been able to secure for my book many interesting facts and illustrations derived from this source. Besides his letters, I've made great use of Beza's extended treatises contained in the collection already referred to, the original chronicles and memoirs of the time, including the Histoire Ecclesiastique de Inglés Reformés, erroneously attributed to Beza himself, but undoubtedly composed under his general supervision, have been my guide throughout the narrative. For the titles of most of these works, I refer the reader to an appended bibliography. As in my early his, earlier histories, so it is now again both a duty and pleasure to express my gratitude to Baron Fernard Deschlicker and Mr. N. Weiss, President and Secretary, respectively, of the Pro French Protestant Historical Society for many acts of kindness and for valuable help in my later researches. I owe the courtesy of Mr. Ferdinand J. Dreer of Philadelphia, a facsimile of an interesting letter of the reformer, now in his rare collection of manuscripts, New York University, September 1899. Imagine having a history class with this man. Whoa. He's the kind of guys you want to sit around. Chapter 1, 1519 to 1539. Childhood and youth. Vesele, birth, parentage, Marie Baudelaire, low. Childhood in Paris becomes a pupil of Volmar, Orleans and Bourges, fellow student of Calvin. Begins civil law, love for classical literature, success in poetry a licentiate in law, returns to Paris. 1539 to 1548, Biza in Paris, present and prospective revenues, mental struggles, struggles, repugnance to practice of the law, urgency of his father, his studies, external quiet and internal unrest, secret marriage with Claudine Desnaux, first literary effort, the Juvenilia, not attacked till after Biza's conversion, his own regret. Etienne Pasquier's estimate, imitation of Ovid and Catullus. 
chapter 3, 1548, conversion, call to lost Los swain, Abraham's sacrifice, illness. His own account of his conversion retires with his wife to Geneva. First intention to become a Protestant printer. Jean Crespin, personal appearance, kindly received by Calvin. Visits Volmar, Tubingen, Pierre Viret, that's another guy. Pierre, I'm not sure if he's translated though. Annexation of the Pays de Vaud by Bern, establishment of Protestantism, disputation in the Cathedral of La Swain, Caroli, Farrell, Blancheros, Iconoclasm, Academy or University, Biza called to Chair of Greek, Hesitancy and Acceptance, his second poetical work, Drama of Abraham's Sacrifice, Chapter 4. 1554, Treatise on the Punishment of Heretics, Execution of Michael Servetus, Protest signed Martin Bellius, Scribe to Sebastian Castilian or Castalio, His Scholarship, Biza maintains that all heretics ought to be punished by the civil magistrate, even capitally, his arguments from Holy Scripture. Chapter 5, 1549 to 1558, Pisa's activity at La Swain. Illness, the five scholars of La Swain, labors for their release. Pisa's brother and his father try to bring him back to France and to Roman Catholicism. Providential leadings. Renewal of alliance between Bern and Geneva. Persecution of Valdensians by French Parliament of Turin, 1556. Biza and Farrell intercede with Zurich, Basel, and Schaffhausen. With German princes, Biza pleads for Christian union. Piedmont reverts to the Duke of Savoy. Persecution at Paris. Biza's new intercession, his ironic exposition of the Reformed faith, incurs danger of alienating old friends, is defended by Calvin. Chapter 6, 1558-1559, becomes Calvin's coadjutor, rector of the University of Geneva. Why Biza left La Swain. Pierre Vire advocates stricter discipline. Opposition of Bern. Biza's attitude removes to School of Geneva, 1558. <clears throat> Calvin's plan of a true university. Theological school with Biza as rector. Other schools projected. Psalm opening, 1559. The Levier du Recteur. Calvin and Biza lecture on alt alternate weeks. Self-sacrifice, subscription to the confession of faith. Chapter 7, Biza at Nirac, 1560, Assembly of Notables at Fontainebleau. Biza pressed by the king and queen of Navarre to come, preaches before them. Manly advice, infatuation of Anton of Bourbon and his brother, perilous return to Geneva. Salutary influence on Jean Albret, the eyes of French Protestants set on Biza. Chapter 8, 1561, recall to France. Changes since Biza left France. Bloody legislation and practice under Francis I and Henry II. Church of Paris instituted 1555. Organization of French Reformed Churches, 1559. Tumult of Amboys, Rapid Progress. Cardinal O'Day de Castilian, Worship in the Suburbs of Paris. Protestant grandees absent themselves from the coronation of Charles IX. Great public assemblies, Papal Nuncio disheartened. Protestants promised a hearing. Catherine de' Medici dissuaded by a Venetian ambassador, viewed with suspicion, justifies himself. 
why Calvin is not summoned. Theodore Beza, invited in his place, reluctantly accepts. Chapter 9, 1561, reception at court. Discouraging news at his arrival in Paris. Summoned to St. Germain and Ley. Attitude of grandees. Preaches before the Princess of Condé. Presented to the Queen Mother. Interview with Cardinal Lorraine. The Cardinal professes to acquiesce. Yep. Okay. Okay. In Beza's Doctrine of the Lord's Supper, Catherine's Delight, Madame de Kersel, skeptical. Calvin, not surprised at the Cardinal's deceit. Reluctance of the prelates to discuss the Queen Mother's resoluteness. Chapter 10, 1561, Speech at the Colloquy of Poesy. Protestants hitherto denied a hearing. Bees and the delegates called to Poesy, gathering in the nun's refectory, September 1561. Charles the Ninth presides, the Chancellor's speech. Vain attempt of Cardinal Tournon to prevent the conference. The Protestants introduced, but left standing behind a bar. Bees's exordium. He prays, using the confession of sins of Calvin's liturgy, loyal profession, points of argument, wherein the Protestants and their opponents differ, the complete satisfaction of Christ, the doctrine of good works, sufficiency of the Holy Scripture, the sacraments, both transubstantiation and consubstantiation repudiated, only two sacraments admitted. Structure of church government confused beyond recognition. Per oration, uproar of the prelates. He has blasphemed. Cardinal Turnin again appeals to the king. His speech cut short by the queen mother. Chapter 11, 1561 and 62. Further discussions, the edict of January. Massacre of Vassy. Beza's plea for Protestantism. Letter to Catherine de Medici. Second conference. Cardinal Lorraine's reply. Change in the form of the colloquy. Conferences at St. Germain. The board of efforts to frame an article on the Lord's Supper. Beza detained in France by the Queen Mother and eminent Protestants. Edict of January published. The Protestants urged to accept it. Massacre of Vassy perpetrated by the Duke of Guise. It leads to civil war. Beza's remonstrance. His words to the King of Navarre. The church and anvil that has worn out many ham hammers. Chapter 12, 1562-1563, Counselor of Conda and the Huguenots in the First Civil War. Geneva extends his leave of absence, his popular preaching, varied duties. Reply to Jean de D'Albret, prepares a manifesto for the prince, revisits Geneva, again permitted to return to France. Present at the Battle of Drole, falsely charged with crimp complicity in the crime of Poltro, price set on his head by the regent of the Low Countries. Chapter 13, 1563, Beza succeeds Calvin, edits Greek New Testament, welcomed by the Council of Geneva and by Calvin. Calumny by Claude de Saints. Moderator of the Venerable Company, Calvin's Death, Beza's Edition of the Greek New Testament, Codex Bezae. Chapter 14, 1566 to 1574, Broad Sympathy, Synod of La Rochelle, Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Day, 
New responsibilities, wide sympathy, state of Europe, National Senate of La Rochelle, 1571, illustrious members, their adhesion to the confession of faith. B is an elected moderator, could we call him Bishop? <laughs> Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Day, August 24, 1572. Fugitives reach Geneva. Bees' sermon at the public fast welcomes refugee pastors. His advice prized by Conde, Henry IV, and the French churches, by the British Protestants, Queen Elizabeth's subversion to Geneva, views of bishops Jewel and Grindel, the dispute about vestments, attitude of Zurich theologians, Bees' reply to the bishops, Admiration for Cartwright, sympathy for the Protestant movement. Controversies and controversial writings, confession of the Christian faith, summary of the whole of Christianity, book of Christian questions and answers, discussion of predestination, Westphal and Hesus, Castalio and Ochino, polygamy and divorce, Discussion regarding the Lord's Supper, Claude de Saints. Oops, wait just a second. Can you come here, little girl? Um, you can sit on my lap if you like. Grandpa's going to read. Can you sit here? There's my little granddaughter. Grandpa's got to read. We're talking about Theodore Beza. <laughs> I'm afraid she'd fall down those stairs over there. Uh, chapter 16, Beza and the Huguenot Psalter. No author of the Huguenot, not the author of the Huguenot liturgy, but joint author of the French Psalms, Clement Moreau, Moreau's first Psalter, his collection of 50 Psalms, the address to the ladies of France, Moreau in Geneva, dies at Turin. Yeah. You think so? Beza's first 33 Psalms, the epistle to the little flock, prescription of Protestant books, completion of the Psalter, momentary popularity of the Psalms at court, Psalm singing and promenades, Copyright secured, multiplication of editions, gained Protestantism, Beza's later hymns. I think, oh, what are you looking at? You starting to talk? Okay, we'll call it an end. We'll take you back to your mother, okay? Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Godspeed. <laughs>